Next up, we have Professor Raj Rajagopal. Dr. Raj has a BS from Mumbai University, an MS from the University of Florida, and a PhD from the University of Michigan. He has taught at the University of Washington and Duke before coming to the University of Iowa. He has organized more than 150 workshops on environment and social entrepreneurship. He has been a nominator for the annual Japan Prize since its inception in 1985 and was the founding editor of Environmental Practice, which is currently published by the Cambridge University Press. Please, please welcome Dr. Raj Rajgopal. I just wanted to uh, tell Sophia that I learned a lot about the admission process. Um, I'm here as a professor. What do we do with students? So I'm going to share with you a lot of exciting things. And since uh, a lot of you are of Indian origin, uh, we have also created an India program at the university. So I'm going to share about that program uh, a glimpse or a few highlights. And uh, I'm not going to read a lot of slides. I'm only going to spend about um, one minute apiece on six or eight slides. The others, I'll just keep looking at Steve and keep on moving and let you read, because you can read much faster by reading it to you. Okay, so start. I want to thank Mike. Um, he is the admissions guy. And um, we have a booth. And take all your time talking to him. He's based in Chicago. So I'm not going to replicate him. He has a lot more knowledge about our admissions, scholarships, and awards, and campus, and campus tours process. OK. A lot of people made it possible. Next. OK, recently we were recognized for a lot of good things globally. Next. For the last two years, we have won more recognition internationally and India-wise and Fulbright's. Next. Senator Paul signed an award, the best award for internationalization of campus. We just got it this year. And the senator is from this state. Next. 14 Fulbrights, Berkeley and Duke also had 14. So we generated 14 Fulbrights this year and last year for studying global cultures, languages, and so on. Next. Again, we won the best India program in the world, in America and the world. We take more students to India than any other university in the world. We take about 150, 100 to 150. We go by planes. Others come by cars, or uh, they take five or 10 students. So they take 5, 10, 15, we take 150. Next slide. OK, this is all life-changing events for me as a professor interacting with students. Several students now, I have become their students because they are doing remarkable things in the world, so I've agreed to become their student and work with them and learn how these students have grown up to become exceptional. Um, by the way, Everything that uh, Dr. Ratnam Chuturi and Porus has done, I was just, uh, I was getting goosebumps when he presented the statistics. So he is my model of somebody who has done extraordinary things. You know, and my background is somewhat similar, industrial engineering and operations research. And uh, so I've gone and spent uh, so much time. So it's a remarkable individual. I want to thank them for organizing this exceptional presentation. Come with us, explore India through our students, alumni, and uh, every other person on the campus. So I'm going to show you some four or five high-speed glimpses. OK. These are all in the areas of healthcare, education, sustainability, energy, environment, and so on. There is a gentleman 50 years ago, there was a surgeon by name Pancetti. He wanted to help Clubfoot. He was a surgeon for 30 years. They wouldn't accept this method. He wanted to fix club foot without surgery. And he's a surgeon. And the hospital makes money by doing surgery. And he came up with, and said, we don't need to do the surgery. Next. So he's Dr. Pancetti from Spain. Uh, he came to Iowa, and he practiced surgery. Next. Approximately one in seven. 150 light birds ends up be, being club food. All the other statistics, you get 10 seconds to read it.
Next slide. This is what the two, half of the time, both the feet are turned in. And a lot of children are neglected, not treated, die living in pain and uh, disability, don't come out of the house. A million children are left like these. And India is the largest club for birth incidents in the world. Next slide, please. USA has 5,000 too. Next slide, please. Three important components. Casting, bracing, readjusting constantly. If you do this within the first year, you can get club foot taken care of. Next slide, please. This is casting. So they train a lot of doctors around the world, surgeons around the world, orthopedicians around the world on casting. And then they come up with a shoe, adjustable shoe. Every few days, it moves the foot one-tenth of a centimeter, or uh, slowly. And uh, they fix the foot within about a year, the child is normal. Next slide, please. And two professors now do this all the time. And they help a lot of our students engage. Now we do this across the world. Next slide. Now, the next person is a former student of mine. She has gone on to change the world. She has distributed close to, you just read this, she provides free children's book to children around the world. Next slide, please. 160 million books for American children in America worth something like $2 billion. I couldn't believe when I see what she has done, and I've been communicating with her for the past 25 years. And I said, I want to be your student. She started to laugh. She said, Raj, you, you are the ones who got me onto this thing. I said, no, you're, you're changing the world. I'm still teaching in the university. Can you teach me how you're doing these kind of things? Next slide, please. So a couple of years ago, she was given this Literarian Award. The year before that, it was given to Dr. Maya Angelou. And the year before that, it was given to Dr. Sulzberger, uh, uh, Mr. Sulzberger, who is the publisher of New York Times. Next slide, please. And um, in 2016, she was given the Jefferson Award. And uh, other first ladies were given the same award, and also Bill and Melinda Gates were given this award. Who would not want to be her student? You know, so this is a pride and joy of uh, having the opportunity to work with 20 years ago, she would come to my office, she would ask me to quit the university, go do something. Then I said, no, you do something. I will give everything that you need, you go do something. And she has done something. Next slide, please. Okay, these are my areas of interest. So there are a lot of people involved in STEM field, you know, science, technology, engineering, and management. So this is the topic of interest, okay. Another student of mine, he would come and give me philosophical lectures when he was a student and my, uh, you know, advisee, asking me to change the world. Then, uh, then one uh, in the junior year, he wanted to get an internship. So I wrote to my good uh, friend and colleague in Boston and got him an internship to work in Seattle, Washington. Now the guy has enabled 25,000 people get internship by writing books and journals, and uh, uh, next slide, please. He has done one for Iowa. What are the energy jobs for Iowa? He has done it for 18 states. Next slide, please. He has done one for Illinois, clean jobs in Illinois. And this guy, I still think of him as a student. He said, Raj, I am 64. I said, you're still my student. And, uh, but remember, I'm your student, come back to Iowa. For the last two, three years, he's coming to Iowa and getting a lot of our students find internship jobs all the way from freshman internship to postdoctoral fellowship. So I am really excited about getting these kind of people involved with young people like yourself. You don't have to come to Iowa to find internship. These people are ready to help anybody everywhere. So they are generalists involved in changing the world. Next slide, please. And these are all the kind of internships he finds for young people, about a thousand of them each year across America. Next slide, please. Now, this is where I work at the University of Iowa. And these are all the state-of-the-art technologies involved 
using all the high-tech satellite, remote sensing, drones, and uh, on and on, you know, various kind of GIS, GPS. Look at all the cars, you know, when you drive, you just find that these are all the geographical tools to navigate, which every one of you, if you have a GPS facility, this is the kind of things you're doing. Okay, next slide. We have the first energy center on campus. And these guys are sitting in this room and managing the entire university, 150 buildings. Next slide. And um, they, first energy center in America, started in 2011, and then more than 120 major buildings with 15 million square feet, annual budget, $90 million. Because we are in a cold region, it, it costs a lot to heat and cool the buildings. And, uh, Budget is 30 million. So they set up this center about five, six years ago. Next slide, please. These are all the utilities on campus, power plant, shilling plant, water plant, coolers, and so on. Next slide, please. These are all the buildings on campus, 120 plus buildings. Next slide, please. Every building has hundreds of rooms. 400,000 pieces of data come in into this center every second. Big data. Next slide, please. All the energy prices in the Midwest are known to us every hour. Next slide, please. And we do all kinds of visualization and uh, dashboards and so on to understand the energy situation second by second. Next slide, please. Students from India and other kinds of places work in the center to come up with models of saving money for the campus. Next slide. And uh, we have saved $7 million a year within four years of founding this. There is a company called Wipro. How many of you have heard of Wipro in India? The vice president showed up here from Wipro to Iowa. They want to employ this technology in 35,000 of their facilities around the world. Microsoft comes to our campus and says, we want to take this to all the other campuses in the world where Microsoft is used. Next slide, please. This is uh, the previous slide, just go back. This one, about uh, 25 years ago, we founded a little center called Center for Global and Regional Environmental Research. Next slide, please. Now there are 120, see, it started with one faculty. And now there are 120 faculty from seven institutions working together to fund several hundred students every year with scholarship, travel scholarship, postdoctoral fellowship, undergraduate scholarships, and so on. We had a student from India who did a postdoc. He did a PhD and a postdoc. Now he runs an organization called Urban Missions, Air Missions, pointing out all the air pollution problems in every city in India. Next slide, please. And uh, this is uh, a, a particular part, one time shot of uh, Gurgaon, India, and the greater Delhi region. They provide this continuous mapping of air pollution situation in every city in India. Next slide, please. And he creates a dashboard with all the data for every little point. See, this is, these are all the ideas behind big data. So many of you might have heard of this idea of big data. This is where it comes. How to take big data and make decisions. Similar to North South Foundation, you know, data analytics. How to uh, fathom all the data and do better decisions. Next slide, please. And here is the last uh, part, exploring research, discovery, entrepreneurship, and so on. Next slide, please. We have an office of research, which last year's budget was like half a billion dollars, $550 million. And they're now connecting undergraduate, graduate professors, external organizations, and providing, providing a lot of support. They connect, share, enable, start, communicate, recognize our students' accomplishment, our professors' accomplishment. Next slide, please. They have what is called crowdfunding. We start funding a lot of undergraduate students to come up with the entrepreneurial idea, and we give 10,000, 15,000, all the way up to $75,000 grant for them to start up, do startups. So this is one of the hottest programs. There are 4,000 students getting an entrepreneurship certificate. 3,800 will fail. They wouldn't amount to a very successful organization, but the other 200 will change the world. We don't know who those 200 are. This is where we are in search, as Ratnam was pointing out. But definitely all will succeed in doing something uh, successful, having a good life. 
But those 10, 20 top-notch firms will come out of these. And then we support annual excellence, and uh, we also have three components, partnership, and then prototypes, and then the proof of concept, and our research incubation center promotes all kinds of faculty and students working together. Next slide, please. This is a new building. Uh, entrepreneur has given us some five or $10 billion to set up a center to promote these kinds of activities. Next slide, please. Okay, this is my program that I started, but again, as he was saying, it was nothing about me, it's the folks in India. I started going to India 10 years ago once, and now I'm going there almost two, three times a year. In the last 10 years, I've been there for 30 times. Next slide, please. I'm going to run through these real fast. Next. Here is a Nobel laureate and, uh, uh, from Bangladesh, Mohammed Yunus, who won the Nobel Prize for microfinance, and uh, one of our Indian physicians from Madurai. He's a close friend. He's the one who started me on India program. Next slide, please. Microfinance in Madurai. Next slide. We were featured in the Biz Ed magazine. As Sophia, Sophia was pointing out, we were compared to Harvard Business School. In Harvard, they take students to study microfinance from the business school. We take from any part of the university, whether they are in music or whether they're dance or they're sculpture or they're English, it doesn't matter. If you want to change the world, come along with us. And uh, this Biz Ed magazine says the student from Iowa is doing as good as the student from anywhere else. So you don't have to be something. You can be anybody, anywhere, and if you have a desire, you can change the world. Okay. One of our favorite programs is healthcare. Our largest subscribing programs. Next one, please. Healthcare. So these students are in a hospital. Next slide, please. And Indian physician. They see young uh, Indian women who are cardiologists, heart specialists, uh, brain surgeon, on and on. They all give them an exposure. By the way, all these organizations in India, just like uh, Ratnam was saying, don't charge us anything. Bring your student, we'll show them what we are doing. So we are picking exceptional organizations in India to showcase all these kind of situations. Next slide. Next. My famous plastic surgeon in the world, done 10,000 cleft lip. You know, we talked about club foot. He's the cleft lip specialist. He has done 10,000 surgeries. Next slide, please. Before and after. He has done 10,000 of these. I would like to create a collage, you know, of all the 10,000 faces before and after and put it on and uh, showcase. Yeah, next slide, please. Here he's in action. He does six of them each day. Doctors in USA do one a week. Next slide, please. Next. 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 We worked with them last year. We'll be working with them again this year. Many of you might know this organization. Next slide, please. We work in Pondicherry. We work in Kerala, in Trivandrum, in Kochi, in uh, housing. Next slide, please. We taught students to do Kuchipuri in three weeks, and they performed, and the American ambassador showed up. He was amazed that they could do it in three weeks. He said, are you serious? serious? They did this in three weeks? Yeah, three weeks, 14 days, 14 hours each day. Next slide, please. And they won all kinds of scholarships and so on. Next slide, please. OK, this is the admission process. I'm just presenting it, but this uh, Mike uh, Melinder is uh, expert on it. Go ahead. These are all the statistic data on admissions awards and so on. I'm going to wrap it up in a nutshell. Come to Iowa, spend the day, write us a memo, tell us what you want to see, take a look, talk to the people, then make a decision. A lot of these things Sophia very eloquently pointed out. Um, what I was amazed at her presentation, she wasn't saying or pushing Chicago at all. That requires somebody beyond ability to be so gracious, whereas I'm just pitching everything that's going on in Iowa, <laughs> okay? That's, so I wanted to appreciate her candor and ability to showcase. Uh, next slide, please. 
Next. These are all uh, available to you on our admissions website too. Next slide, please. Robotics and all the, this is one of the best centers. We have top three wellness facility that we have created. Next slide, please. There are all kinds of living learning communities which he mentioned. Next slide, please. And uh, the placement rates and graduation rates and uh, employees coming to campus to hire. Next slide, please. The admission process, something I was really impressed with the admission process, maybe I need to check with them a little bit more. They're not asking you to write essays anymore. And they're not asking you to ACT, SAT, because a lot of times some of these are duplicative. So you need to check with our admission process what is needed for financial aid, you need something for admission, you don't need something and so on. We have fantastic financial aid, and I was impressed to hear from Mike, 7,000 students from Illinois are going to Iowa. We are next to Iowa, 50% Iowa students, 30% are from Illinois. I mean, Iowa and Illinois is the same thing. You know, then the, guess what is the third place from around the world where we have the largest number of students? Anybody? China. You know, Iowa, Illinois, and then China. Okay, next slide, please. If you want any information from me or Mike, these are our email IDs. I'm going to leave it up here. If you have three minutes, I want to show this video. We have three minutes. Can you run that video, please? This is our international programs. Wanted to showcase. If you have any family members in India, you want some information for them, I have brought a booklet for your relatives or family in India. You can mail it to them. So I've got some uh, 50, 60 copies with Mike. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Bruce Harold, president of the University of Iowa. We pride ourselves here at Iowa on diversity. Wherever you come from, no matter your background, no matter your religion, no matter your culture, we want you here. You are welcome here. Hi, my name is Mahesh and I'm an international student from India. I came here two years ago and it has been an amazing two years of my life. The thing that I notice here the most is the student and faculty diversity and the various committees that value and appreciate your presence. So if you're thinking of coming here, you are welcome here. Hi, I'm Malin Sanchez and I am from Des Moines, Iowa. I appreciate having international students on campus because they enrich our community and help me learn about the world in different ways. I'm Shu, coming from China. I make lots of friends here. The University of Iowa is a welcoming place. Hi there, I'm Jim Throgmorton, Mayor of Iowa City. Welcome to our city. You know, when you walk around downtown, which is tightly connected to the core of the university, you'll feel like you're in a house of many rooms. You walk along the street, you might hear Mandarin Chinese, you might hear French, you might hear Arabic, you might hear Spanish, you'll probably even hear English. Regardless, you're going to find that you're in a great place. We'd love to have you come. Come on down to Iowa City and join us. Hi, my name is Ala Abishit. I'm from Iraq. Uh, I came here with my family and we love living here because the people here are very friendly. Hi. My name is Josh Abdel, and I'm from Iowa City, Iowa. I'm thankful for international students because they help me to have new perspectives on life. I'm Sarah Gardial from the Tibby College of Business. Employers tell us that one of the number one requirements for success on the job is the ability to work across cultures. We love international students here in our college because they provide an opportunity for all of our students, international and domestic, to learn a skill in the classroom that will take them far in their career success. Hello everyone, my name is Sunny and I'm an international student from Hong Kong. I involved in a lot of student organizations on campus. One of the most rewarding experiences that I ever had is to mingle and network with a lot of international students from around the globe. If you are still thinking about coming to University of Iowa, you are welcome here. My name is Wendy Lee and I'm from Singapore. I flew 9,000 miles just to be here at the University of Iowa, and I've never regretted it one bit. You are welcome here, too. I want you to know you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. And you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You're welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. 
You are welcome here. You are welcome.